authorities found the lifeless body of a young girl who was fiercely attacked with a sharp object on her neck. The police knew that their task was to discover who that woman was and why someone would have killed her in such a gruesome way. But they did not know that they would be investigating one of the worst crimes that occurred in Mexico. Originally from Mexico, Angie Michelle Vera Estrada was a beautiful young woman who planned to have a professional career and move forward with her life as an independent woman. She was outgoing and full of confidence. She lived her youth to the fullest. It was easy for her to do things, she always knew how to get what she wanted by relying on her smiles, her curves and her attitude. However when she became aware of her social skills, she began to lean towards wayward adventures, hanging out with bad influences and dangerous people. She believed she found in them a formula to make easy money, perhaps through the sale of illegal substances in parks or on neighborhood corners, earning extra money as a petty criminal. Angie Vera was born in 2001, she was the second daughter of Mrs. Marisol who also had an older son. During her childhood, Angie's family moved to the municipality of Puebla in 2009, where Angie lived an important part of her life. She finished her studies in high school and enjoyed her adolescence with parties and outings with friends. Aware of her beauty, her thick lips, her large, deep-looking brown eyes, her long black hair, her slim body and fine countenance, Angie Vera used to dress herself in the mirror to see herself even more radiant in your reflection. She was a woman with a humorous and outgoing personality, she had no shame or prejudices when it came to dressing sensually, with tight clothing or short dresses. She loved traveling and used to raise money to visit different places in her country. Her joy led her to have many friends, as well as rivalries and some enmities. The young lady occasionally dressed in revealing clothes, she also went to parties in exclusive and sophisticated places. She liked to show off her figure, a little skin to feel sensual and have a little more attention. After finishing her basic studies in high school, she told her mother that she wanted to pursue a career as a psychologist or a lawyer. In fact, Angie had already worked as an assistant in a legal office before. So she had immersed herself in these legal tasks and little by little she understood the dynamics of work as a potential lawyer. She wanted to work in that business, in that vocation. Furthermore, from a very young age she already knew how to earn money and she was almost sure that in law she would find a good economic source. March 8, 2020 It was Women's Day, an important date for revolutionaries and women around the world who trust in a less sexist and less dangerous planet for the female gender. Likewise, Angie Michelle connected with these thoughts of liberation and dignity. For this reason, she joined with a group of feminist women organized through Facebook and other social networks coordinating to appear before the Great National March commemorated in a Great Mexican National Strike. The general premise said that no woman should work on that day, inviting Mexican women from all over the country to do absolutely nothing during that day, leaving their jobs in schools, offices, companies, businesses, or universities still. Not to cook during the day in the case of housewives, not to do any type of job or work as a protest. Miss Angie spoke out in favor of the social movement and gave her testimony as a woman exclaiming that she was tired of going out and being seen as an intimate object all the time. Of not feeling safe on transportation or in public places. Angie posted messages on her Facebook wall about how hard it can be to be a woman in Mexico, where at least 10 women die every day for gender reasons according to statistics. As a protest, Michelle made a missing person poster with her face symbolizing the missing women in her country. Although on the poster she clearly explained that it was a representation and that she was perfectly safe and healthy in the house. April 19, 2020 Miss Angie Michelle Vera decided to take her own course and become independent from her mother's house, venturing to live alone and see how to finance her life as an autonomous woman. She moved to the San Andres Cholula community. There she shared a home with another young woman, a friend of hers, with a difficult family situation, Jasmine Hernandez who was 14 years old. However, Angie preferred not to share the address of her new house with her mother. Perhaps because she was afraid of a surprise visit or because she was hiding certain facets of herself that she had never shown to her family. A slightly more disordered and alternative lifestyle where the consumption of illegal substances, frenetic parties and sometimes lack of control were an everyday occurrence. On June 15, some people close to Angie's roommate reported the disappearance of 14-year-old Jasmine Hernandez, who had not been seen by anyone for several days. Having been identified for the last time according to the Attorney General's office at 1 p.m. while traveling through the pink zone of San Andres Cholula near some clubs. Angie had also disappeared, however her relatives did not comment publicly. There were rumors among friends and people close to the young woman that she had something like a second life. 
She was not studying at any university nor did she work in anything formal or legal. Presumably the young women were part of or were in some way involved with outlaw gangs that sold small-time substances. Drug dealers or colloquially called hibaros who sell bags of illegal substances on the streets at reasonable prices. In other words, Angie and her friend Jasmine were hanging out with dangerous people from the underworld, criminals with criminal records and people with a bad reputation. The mother of the missing young woman, Mrs. Marisol, shared with the police the last messages she exchanged with her daughter dated July 12 when her daughter went out with her friend Jasmine supposedly to the beaches of Acapulco. They then contacted Angie's boyfriend to verify this information, who said that the last time he saw her girlfriend was in a club area in San Andres Cholula with two strange men who left with her. He then lost contact with the young woman. Intensive searches were carried out on social networks, the respective disappearance complaints were filed with the state prosecutor's office. On July 15, the formal missing person file was issued with the face of Angie Michelle Vera. Groups defending women's rights and feminists in solidarity with the cause proposed the hashtag Justice for Michelle, demanding justice and effectiveness from the corresponding authorities. July 13, 2020 The body of Michelle Vera was found lifeless in the community of Ocotlan, belonging to the municipality of San Nicolas de los Ranchos. The body was recognized as that of the young Angie Michelle Vera when compared with the photographs that confirmed her identity. She had died from strangulation and had a deep wound at her neck, caused by a sharp object. Jasmine Hernandez Moda, reportedly contacted her mother and indicated that they had killed her friend Angie Michelle Vera, cutting her throat, and that she had witnessed the entire murder that happened in front of her. She didn't know who the murderers were, but she was too scared. The police interviewed her after transferring her to the state of Puebla. On July 20, the prosecutor's office issued a public message indicating that they had recognized at least seven suspects involved in Angie's murder, but did not give details of the investigation or its progress, which was being carried out in a hermetic manner. A Mexican press journalist managed to obtain access to exclusive and confidential information, revealing important data in the magazine Intolerantia. There he indicated that Angie Michelle Vera's friend, Jasmine Hernandez, since June 15 had begun to live with a dangerous man named Juan Carlos N., known by the alias of the Greek or the Jackal. A subject linked to the Mexican Mafia, leader of a local gang linked to Sinaloa organizations that operated throughout the San Andres Cholula sector, who lived for a time in the same house as his girlfriend Jasmine Hernandez. This relationship between this criminal and the young women brought with it a kind of alliance. A shady business proposal to get easy money where the young women agreed to ship and transport a substance called crystal. But things didn't go well and the women had serious problems with the delivery of this substance, awakening the distrust and anger of the full band. Juan Carlos was the main suspect in the crime, but the suspect was absconding from the authorities and his whereabouts were currently unknown. Police captured eight other people linked to crime, whose names were made public for the press. Mr. Lorenzo, Mrs. Guadalupe, Mr. Brandon, Miss Alejandra, Mr. Fernando, Miss Maria Fernanda, Mr. Ivan Augustin and Miss Samantha. They were the alleged members of the gang. Days later, four more people were arrested, Mr. Juan Carlos, Mr. Ivan and two other women, all prosecuted for the crime of drug dealing and car theft. Months later, Juan Carlos was acquitted of the crime, fined only for possession of the green plant. The police investigation was proceeding behind closed doors secretly, giving silent progress to the press on rare occasions. Eight of the detainees were presented before a guarantee control judge and the case was investigated under the label of aggravated homicide, not femicide, which aroused discontent among the population that followed the investigations. That night when the fatality occurred, Angie allegedly arrived at a house in the San Andres Cholula sector, guided and persuaded by her boyfriend who had organized the meeting where they appeared together with several people dedicated to drug dealing. Yvonne Augustin, 28 years old, took Angie and Michelle Vera to the meeting with these people from the underworld, who were actually planning to teach her a lesson for the problems with the deliveries that she recently had, which had gone wrong. The woman had allegedly lost an expensive load with the substance called glass. By falling into the trap she would be tortured and punished. A woman named Guadalupe was the first to attack her, supposedly hired specifically to torture her. Angie Michelle Vera refused to give her cell phone and passwords. They sensed that Angie had her separate business. Then Guadalupe began brutally punishing her, which was so intense that it caused her to die from asphyxiation. 
the woman would be slid in front of her friend, who received a harsh message from her gang. Michelle's body was wrapped in a blanket and then dumped in an abandoned area. On May 14, 2023, four of the women investigated were acquitted of the crime due to lack of evidence. However, the men were accused of feminicide and on April 10, 2023, the Puebla prosecutor's office sentenced them to 26 years in prison.